why would anyone still want a 30 out six? Friends, I grew up hunting big mule deer and elk in uh, southern Utah back when there were still quite a few of them. And man, everyone I knew had a 30 out six or a 30 30 lever action, right? But the serious hunters carried 30 out sixes. Never one to swim the mainstream. I got myself a 270. I wanted to be a little bit different. And I loaded tough controlled expansion bullets and hunted elk with it, did really well. So even back then, I was looking for something different and eventually I got myself a 280 Ackley Improved because I understood, even at an early age, I understood, I grasped the advantages that modern cartridge design can provide. But was I right? Was I gaining all that much by going to something different than what most folks termed the grand old 30 out six. Not that I didn't like it. I just wanted something unique, right? So in reality, I was savvy enough to see the merits of the 30 out six. Uh, there's just not much around the world short of hunting dangerous game that you can't do with a 30 out six. I'm a twin. I have an identical twin brother that uh, is a passionate hunter as well. And he opted to go with the 30 out six. So all my formative years, I saw that cartridge in performance, and I had one myself pretty early on as well. I just opted not to use it as much. I had a sporterized 1903 Springfield with a custom barrel by a maker called Sukeli out of Arizona. Some of you old-time riflemen and competitive riflemen may recognize that name. So let's fast forward a half century now. Today, we have some incredible cutting-edge cartridges. They're optimized for accuracy, for efficiency, and for retained velocity and energy. Those are a big deal when distances stretch out. You know, it's funny, even the best of them are even named PRC, precision rifle cartridges, right? So at this point in time, let's ask this question again. Why would anyone still want a 30 out of six? Well, friends, I'm here to tell you why, because there are plenty of reasons. So let's start with just a little bit of history of the cartridge. Really, it's a refinement of the 3003, which was the first attempt at a new, uh, higher performance cartridge in, you guessed it, 1903. Really, it was designed for use with heavy round nose bullets. And that was something that the War Department and those motivating this effort to redesign a more effective cartridge uh, wanted to get away from. I can't imagine why they did that, unless maybe they had a big stock of projectiles designed for the 3040 Craig or something that they wanted to use up. I don't know. At any rate, within three short years, they shortened that 3003 cartridge by a minimal amount, probably a 20th of an inch or so, and um, introduced pointy bullets, lighter weight bullets, pushed faster. And it made the 30 out six a different sort of beast. Velocities were now, you know, in that 2700, 2800 foot per second range, which was the fastest US military cartridge, if I'm not mistaken, ever to that point. And this was in the, um, the rumblings during the rumblings lead that led up to World War I. So it was kind of an important project. And um, early on, the 30 out six won a very prestigious uh, long range shooting match at Camp Perry, where the national matches are held every year called the Wimbledon match. The British have their Wimbledon cup with tennis. We have our Wimbledon match at the national matches. And the 30 out six for decades dominated until 1935 a shooter i believe his name was ben hogan proved that magnums were even better at a thousand yards won it with a 300 h and h custom rifle and kind of changed the name of the game but for more than three decades the 30 out 6 30 out 3 and then the 30 out 6 were the go-to for anyone mounting a campaign to win the thousand yard match at the national matches uh, as far as I know, 1936 was the last time the 30 out six won that match, but I, I digress. World War I came around, and our boys went 
to battle in the trenches of Europe with bolt action 30-06s. And they gained a different appreciation for what a cartridge can do. It's a significantly different beast than anything before. Any lever action cartridge, any single shot cartridge. And they came back from that conflict with a different understanding of rifle cartridge performance. And the better rifle among them, among them wanted a 30 6 to hunt with, to compete with as well. Once they got home, some of them, but most of them just wanted to hunt with it because they'd learned of its capabilities. And um, before too long, because the M1 Grand was being designed, the first true semi-automatic battle rifle for World War II. And before long, uh, surplus 1903 Springfields chambered in 30-06 could be had for very inexpensive prices. So Americans did what they did and they took a, a product and adapted it to meet their needs. And they sporterized them, which... You know, at the time, removed a lot of extra weight, made them handle a little quicker, carry a little easier for a day in the mountains. Anybody today uh, cringes when you talk about sporterizing a, a World War I battle rifle because uh, those in original configuration are now are so rare. They're, they really bring a premium and are a true, uh, you know, collectible and arf artifact uh, that speaks of our country's history. At any rate, uh, very quickly, the 30 6 became a household name among American hunters, and it still is today. And when loaded with good bullets, you know, let's call it that versatile 180 grain weight range, the 30 6 is a profoundly authoritative cartridge with which to hunt. So, speaking of today, how does the 30 6 compare? Well, Performance of the 30-06 can be optimized to give it its best chance of standing up and you know, having a favorable contrast or comparison to a modern cartridge. So the best way to do this is to load a high BC bullet over high performance temperature stable propellants, gunpowders so that'll give you the best possible velocity and efficiency and consistency. So we're talking something like a um, a nozzle 190 grain Acubond long range bullet. This can be driven to about 2700 feet per second with hand loads and it has a BC, a G1 BC approaching 600, it's 0.597, which really gives it a pretty favorable comparison to popular long range cartridges such as the 6.5 Creedmoor today, which shoots a Average of 140 grain bullet with a very similar BC at a very similar muzzle velocity. 30 out 6 kicks more, but it also hits a whole bunch harder downrange. If you're a target shooter, you just don't care. You want the lighter kick of the 6.5 Creed more. If you're a hunter, the 30 out 6 has a very significant edge on even deer, I would argue, but certainly game bigger than deer. Another advantage that the 30 out 6 has that none of the modern whiz-bang cartridges, especially those that fall into that Magnum category, can uh, match, and that is magazine capacity. Most 30 out 6 traditional rifles, those sporterized bolt rifles built on a, a, you know, vintage, now a vintage surplus rifle, 1903 Springfield or whatnot, will hold five down in the magazine. Winchester Model 70s all hold five down in the magazine. Mauser-based rifles do as well. Some of the other um, rifles just designed for hunting, such as the Remington 700, will hold four down. Uh, Ruger's M77 Hawkeye holds four in the magazine. Still, it's one more than almost any Magnum magazine will hold. So you still have a 20% increase, even just with four down. You got a 40% increase if you can put five rounds in your magazine. Another advantage that I think is um, overlooked today way more than it should be is smooth feeding. Back when the 30 6 was really the thing to have, we were used to fighting wars, world wars, big wars around the globe. And with um, Tools that we had to function ourselves, not uh, semi-autos. And so smooth feeding was a big, big deal. Most modern hunting rifles today don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. 
And so you get some cartridges that feed quite roughly. The short uh, magnums especially have a large cartridge diameter and a short body, so they have to cam up out of the magazine at quite a steep angle. And they don't feed smoothly. 30 out 6 feeds pretty smoothly. And for a hunter, especially one that's excited, cold, maybe up against a challenging situation trying to get follow-up shots off to get a, a deer down or whatnot, smooth feeding is a big deal. Here's another one, and this is maybe the most significant influencer in uh, most of the hunters choosing to buy a 30 out 6 today, and that's that ammunition is literally available everywhere that ammunition is sold. The 30 out 6 is extremely widespread around the world, and you can find a box of ammunition in just about any place that's ever sold ammunition and is still selling it. Gas stations, little podunk uh, sporting goods stores in tiny towns in rural America. And of course, the big sporting goods stores will have a vast selection of factory ammunition. So the 30 out 6 is easy to find ammunition for. It's easy to hand load because there's over 100 years worth of data generated for it, for hand loaders. Easy to find components for, uh, fired cartridge cases, reloading dies, component bullets to load in your cartridge cases, and uh, and so forth. The, the real big spread of factory ammunition has another advantage too. It makes it easy to find a load that your rifle shoots really well. Also gives you the option to choose a bullet that performs well on game, the specific game that you're going to hunt. Whether that be a little coos white-tailed deer in uh, Arizona or old Mexico or a moose in Alaska. So there's a however coming here, right? I know you heard it. Here's the however. Modern cartridges, such as the 7mm PRC right here, have uh, similar recoil, maybe a tad more than the 30 out 6 but not significantly. And they shoot similar weight bullets much faster. We're talking 300 feet per second faster, so that's an increase of 10%. And even more importantly, those bullets have a much higher BC. 180 grain Hornady ELD match bullet in the 7mm PRC has a BC, a G1 BC, of nearly 800. Uh, that's a 0 0.08, really it's 0 0.0793 or something like that, but it's close enough to 800 on the G1 scale that we can call it that. And that makes a huge difference when we're talking about wind bucking ability and the ability to hang on to velocity way, way out there, which then, of course, translates into energy on impact and makes a more efficient, effective hammer when you're shooting game at extended distances. So who cares? Well, long range shooters care. That's who. And since I'm one of them, yeah, candidly, I care myself. But here's the thing. You don't really need all that downrange advantage, particularly if you rarely have ever shoot past 400 yards on big game. So that's a very important caveat because if you consider the reality, I mean, I'm a Western guy, right? I live in Southern Idaho. I grew up in Utah, big, wide open country. And here, a shot inside 200 yards is pretty rare. Really, our average is probably around three to 400 yards. And if you're serious about your riflemanship, you're going to be uh, polished up, tuned up with your hunting rig out to 600 yards these days. Some guys push that envelope a lot further. That's a discussion for a different time, right? But that is why in this demographic of hunters, these Western guys out here, the 30 out six just isn't very strong anymore. The technical advantages of the monitored cartridges like the 7mm PRC, the 300 PRC, stand out when you're doing this type of hunting. However, in the grand scheme of things, although we feel like well, you know, our hunting is pretty important to us, right? We're a small percentage overall. Non-Western hunters, so anybody in the, the Eastern Coast, the Deep South, the Northeast, even the Northwest, where there's not a lot of open country, international hunters around the world, very few of those hunters shoot long distances on big game. So all those guys are still extremely well served with a 30-06. And um, well, let me just say this. 
Even though I gravitate toward modern high-performance cartridges for my own hunting, I'll never be without a 30 out 6 myself. So before wrapping up, let's talk a little bit about how to get the best out of your 30 out 6 If you're a 30 out 6 guy, this is where the rubber meets the road in modern times. This is what you need to be paying attention to to make your 30 out 6 relevant and get the very best out of it on today's scene because there are some things you can do. For starters, let's look at some of the cartridges we have right here. So there's a, on the far left of your screen, you'll see a 308 cartridge with 150 grain soft nose flat base hunting bullet. Very typical bullet for a, a 308. And even for deer hunters uh, using a 30 out six, I think, well, this is just one man's opinion, but the 30 out six is a little bit handicapped by 150 grain bullet. It just doesn't give you the best performance out of it has a low BC, low sectional density, and often won't give as much penetration as I like. 165 grain bullet, this little boat-tailed Sierra with a lot of lead exposed at the tip here. That's a better choice. It's a very good bullet for deer and stepping up into games such as the caribou and so forth. And these are known for accuracy. It's a great bullet. Still not your optimal choice for hunting today. Next to it, just for the, the reference of size, is a 180 grain flat base lead tip nozzler partition. This is one of the all time great 30 caliber bullets in any cartridge, right? Whether it's a 308 or a, you know, a 300 Ultra Mag, it's going to give you tremendous performance on any hooved game you could care to shoot with it. However, it's still not real aerodynamic. You're not going to get great downrange performance with it. So let's shift, shift over here through this lineup of cartridges. Right here, the one I'm pointing at, you've got a, a typical lead nose bullet that's not going to be uh, very aerodynamic. Traditional 30-06 bullet, it's just okay. It's a good performer if you're hunting inside 200 yards. Next to it, there's a, a bullet, a cartridge with a monometal bullet in it. You can tell by the blue tip that it's a, a, a Barnes bullet. And that's a very good bullet for uh, any time that you need a lot of penetration. I believe this one's 165 or 180 grain version. Next to that is a cartridge representing a more modern bullet. That has a black tip on it. That bullet's a Swift Sirocco 2. It's got a long tapered fine entry on it, just like a speedboat. That's gonna flow through the atmosphere with, uh, with the greatest of ease, right? Inside, you can't see it, but it'll have an aggressive boat tail. So that's gonna hold on to velocity and energy very well. You'll have minimal wind drift and maximum downrange energy on target on impact. Right over here, this little lineup of bullets, you can see some specialty type bullets that give the 30 out six an edge if you need it. I'm pointing at a triple shock. That's a Barnes 180 grain triple shock bullet. This is my top choice when I'm looking for Really good accuracy and um, really deep penetration. These bullets tend to be very easy to load for uh, for high performance. When factory loaded, they they tend to be very accurate. The 180 grain version will penetrate very deeply, so this is a good choice for use on big bodied game. Elk, yeah, but really moose, uh, mountain grizzly, things like that. It does extraordinarily well at bison and so forth. Here in the center, we have a Hornady, uh, this red tip bullet is a Hornady ELDX, and it's got a thin jacket, soft lead core, very easy to load for accuracy as well. Expands really dramatically on impact. It's best used at extended distances and is really prime if you want to reach way out. You can get that in a 200 grain version that performs very well in a 30 out six and will load, hand load to fit most standard length magazines or this, what I'm pointing at right here, is a 212 grain version. It um, needs a little bit longer magazine length. So if you've got a, a bit of an extended magazine, you can hand load those. Gives the best possible downrange performance uh, for hunting of its type. And then the last one, this kind of cool round nose looking bullet. Now, why am I showing you this if in the very beginning I said, you know, they moved away from a round nose in a 30 out 6 because it was. Um, outdated doesn't give good ballistic performance right start slow and get slower real fast because it doesn't flow through the air easily 
Well, this specific bullet is a nozzle partition as well. If you are hunting brown bears, coastal brown bears in Alaska with a 30 out six, this is a bullet you should consider very strongly. It's been proven by uh, guides up there for many years as a pretty darn good choice for even the biggest bears. Not real good past uh, 200 yards and even that's a stretch. I would say this bullet is prime inside 100 yards. And uh, there you have it. There's a few really top-notch choices that you can choose to hand load or look for factory ammunition or even get a boutique loader to load for you if you're not uh, into hand loading yourself. Okay, so let's touch on a few other little bullet points here on my notes of other ways to get the best out of your 30 out 6 If you don't hand load at all, just buy premium ammunition. You'll get better accuracy, better modern projectiles. Pick those sleek high BC bullets when you have the option to do so because you'll get the best potential downrange performance uh, for a game bigger than deer. And this is an important caveat right here. Choose tough controlled expansion bullets. I've seen guys get in trouble using a 30 out six on elk if they were using a real soft cup and core bullet in a lightweight let that little 150 grain bullet because it will expand huge if you hit an elk on the shoulder up close it's going to pancake and fail to penetrate well you might single lung that animal just choose a tough bullet if you're hunting anything bigger than deer if you're hunting little game shoot whatever is the most accurate in fact something that has a little bit of splash fragments on impact is going to get you a quicker kill on a very thin-skinned, small-bodied animal. And uh, finally, for what it's worth, the 30 out 6 and the 308 are not similar cartridges. And here, I am staunchly in the corner of the 30 out 6. And here's why. The 308 can't do several things that the 30 out 6 can. Now, the 30 out 6, when loaded with a lightweight bullet, sure, it's not a lot better than the throwaway. But as I said earlier, that's just not its forte. When you load a heavy bullet, something like this 180 grain uh, monometal bullet or a 200 grain match bullet or a 220 grain hunting bullet like the nozzle partition, the 308 can't handle those. The neck is too short, the overall length is too short, and the capacity of the, the powder reservoir inside the cartridge is too minimal. You cannot push those heavy 30 caliber bullets that give that diameter the best possible performance effectively with a 308. The 30 out 6 has a longer neck and a much greater uh, propellant capacity inside, so it will perform with those heavier bullets. And the heavier you go, the bigger the margin becomes between the 308 and the 30 out 6. Now, does that mean the 308 is not worth keeping around? Eh, I'm not going to say that. If you're interested in the advantages of the 308, the bona fide, genuine, does a better than almost anything else characteristics of the 308, watch for an upcoming episode on that cartridge. So, my friends, who the heck still wants a 30 out 6? Me, that's who. And I'll wager many of you watching. I have no doubt that a lot of you own and love a 30 out 6. Hunters across this nation and around the world know it, love it, and trust it. That's why it's called the Grand Old 30-06, and that is why it's legendary.